Good morning everyone. I hope you guys are all having a blessed day. Uh, mine's going really good. It's Friday, so we got the weekend in front of us. Well listen, we had a comment on one of the videos and the person, most likely an atheist, said, give me your absolute best proof for God. And I thought, well that's easy. I know of a couple. Matter of fact, it's easier to prove God than it is to disprove Him. So, uh, this is what it says in Psalms 19, 1 to 4. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows His handiwork. Day unto day utters speech, and night unto night shows knowledge. There is no speech nor language where there is not a voice heard. Their line has gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. What this scripture is telling us is that anyone, that all it takes is a little common sense, and you can look around at everything in, on the earth, and you can see that there's a God. Everything from the smallest microscopic organism is irreducibly complex. Everything is irreducibly complex. There is design in every little thing. And not just design, extraordinary design. Just the design of the humming bee is just outrageous. So the Bible says anyone with common sense can look around and know that there's, this whole place is designed. So listen. This is how you disprove evolution, very simply. Here's a jar. Now I want you to imagine this jar is completely clean. I mean, I scrubbed it out, soap and water, completely clean. There's not a thing in it. And then you sanitize it, put the lid back on, nothing inside, totally sanitized, and then you put a vacuum to it and suck out all the air. So now you have a jar that has absolutely nothing in it. Not one single molecule, not one atom, nothing. Okay, nothing's there. So you go off and do your thing and you come back in a year and you look at this jar and there's nothing in there. And you go, wow, I would have thought something would have been in there by now. So you go away for a hundred years and you come back and you look inside and you go, wow, there's still nothing in there. How can that be? So you go away and you come back in 10,000 years and you look at this right here and you go, wow, there's nothing in there. You come back in a million years and wow, there's nothing in there. You know why there's nothing in there? Because something cannot come from nothing. The second law of thermodynamics: for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Something can't come from nothing. The entire, the entire universe, the entire universe, everything that is. Carl Sagan said in his series, uh, Cosmos, he brought it all down to everything we can see in the entire known universe, which is trillions and trillions and trillions of galaxies. He said it was all in the size of a softball. And then one day it just blew up and blew into everything that is. And then someone said, Dr. Sagan, where did the softball come from? And he goes, well, we don't know. Well, something can't come from nothing, so there was no softball. See what I'm saying? This whole creation screams design. And if there's design, there has to be a designer. Disproves evolution. Something can't come from nothing but everything can come from consciousness. In other words, there's a spirit being out there somewhere that created everything. 
because something can't come from nothing, but everything can come from a being. It says in Genesis 1.1, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and Genesis 1.3 says how he did it. And God said, let there be. He spoke it all into existence. Point number two that completely disproves evolution is DNA. The helix coil of DNA with all the information that is absolutely coded to perfection. Bill Gates took one look at DNA when it was explained to him and Bill Gates said without a doubt that's software. That is software. If that's software, someone had to write that software. Here's a spool. This spool completely disproves evolution. I weighed myself this morning. I did it just for this video. I normally don't like doing that, but I did it anyway. And I weigh exactly 100 and 99.2 pounds. 199.2 pounds. Well, science tells us that a 200 pound human has just about 1 trillion cells in their body. So this body is made up of a trillion microscopic cells. In every cell there's a submarine with a propeller. And that submarine delivers nutrients all over to that everything in that cell. That cell is more complex than every system in New York City. The electrical grid, the subway, every building, everything. One human cell is more complex than all of New York City. Now within every cell is this right here. A spool. A regular spool. And on every spool and there's a trillion of them in my body. I have a trillion cells. Inside every cell is a spool. On every spool is a six foot strand. Which is right about there. Every spool has a six foot strand of DNA within it. And that DNA unrolls and rolls back up. It unrolls, gets information, rolls back up and it never gets tangled. And you mean to tell me that that cell with a submarine and a propeller that delivers nutrients and a spool of DNA, that that came about in a puddle of ooze? You think that? No way. No way. PhDs are leaving the evolution camp by the thousands. And the reason they are is because of DNA. A PhD can look at DNA and they, they, they go at software. There's no way that could evolve. So the PhDs are leaving the evolution camp by the thousands. And what camp are they going to? Well, believe it or not, they're going over to the UFO camp. They're believing that obviously Someone had to put life on this planet because it didn't evolve. Someone put us here. You know, Eric von Danken, when he wrote Chariots of the Gods, that's what the questions he was asking. He looked at all the evidence on the earth and he said, you know what, someone put us here. And I remember my dad reading that book and my dad totally, totally believed his scenario. But, uh, and I do too. Someone did put us here. Question is, who? Well, I don't think it was the Anunnaki. And this is something else I also believe, and I believe that person that uh, put that comment on that video proved God. You don't have to prove God. Everything screams out that there's a Creator. And this is something I firmly believe. Everybody knows there's a God. The most devout atheist knows there's a God. Everybody knows there's a God, but they don't want to admit it. See, everybody knows it because God created us that way, but they don't want to admit it. Because the minute you admit there's a God, then you have to admit that I'm accountable to Him. 
then you have to admit that there's laws that he's put in place and you don't want to follow any of those laws. Psalms 14.1, this is what it says. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Psalms 53.1 says the same thing. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. God repeated that because he wants us to know if you don't acknowledge him, you're a fool. People, we were put here by someone. The question is, who? And in that who, who has the ability to look at absolutely nothing and say, let there be and speak it into existence? Who has that power? Only God. God is the only one who can create. Everybody else can copy, but they can't create. Life can only come about from God. AI, artificial intelligence, all that is is a glorified computer. It'll never be a living being because only God can create a living being. So anyway, prove there's a God? Well, something can't come from nothing and a six-foot spool of DNA inside every cell tells me there's a God. And the fool has said in his heart there is no God. Choose one or the other. One of those roads leads to hell and one of those roads leads to eternal life. If there is a God, and there is, you need to get to know Him. He has a name. His name is Jesus Christ. And He came and died on the cross to pay your sin debt. And not only that, He loves you more than you will ever know. People, we serve a great God. Anyhow, I just want to give you something to think about. Heaven or hell, you choose. Just remember, once you take your last breath, it's a done deal.